He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life and what you will eat, or about your body and what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Notice the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have neither storehouses nor barn, yet God feeds them. How much more important are you than birds? Can any of you, by worrying, add a moment to your lifespan? If even the smallest things are beyond your control, why are you anxious about the rest? Notice how the flowers grow. They do not toil or spin. But I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of them. If God so clothes the grass in the field that grows today and is thrown in the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O oh, you of little faith? When we were children, many of us were afraid of the dark. Lying in bed, walking down in the basement, fear enveloped us like the darkness itself. What was out there? What might be hiding? What were we unable to protect ourselves from? Without any light to see, we were cast into a world of unknowing. It was not ultimately the darkness that scared us. It was the experience of not knowing. As adults, this primal fear remains with us. Only instead of the darkness that casts feelings of anxiety upon us, it's often the lack of certainty we experience in faith, relationships, or the future. Too much is left to chance. Too much fails to be proven. And so we're filled with doubt. We lie awake at night wondering what will come, powerless to shape our fate. Unsettled by our lack of knowing and even more unnerved by our inability to control it, we divert our attention to trivial worries, plunging into frenetic work, grades, games, fantasies, and social media. We worry about things that don't matter because they distract us from thinking about things we should worry about. Life, death, faith, justice, and mercy. But we can't focus on these things because we lack patience. We want results now. We've seen a church around for 2,000 years, a country for centuries, ourselves for multiple decades, and we simply can't face the fact that we're still a mess. When will conversion come? When will we finally be who we're supposed to be, turning from our weakness and living as a glorified people in God? The anxiety is just too much to face sometimes. It's in these times that we must remember God's words to us. Be still and know that I am God. As much as we like to worry, as much as we can let our fears get the best of us, the fact of the matter is that God is in control of it all. There is nothing beyond his power, nothing outside of his vision, and in the end, the kingdom will come when God desires. St. Augustine famously said that our souls are restless until they rest in you, Lord. So we must learn to do just that. Rest in the Lord. If you want to be a disciple of Christ, you must let go of your anxiety and trust that Jesus knows the way even when you don't. Leave behind your need for certainty, trivial worries and impatience, and let God be in control. This week, I invite you to take three things to prayer. If you could ask God any question, what would you ask? What does this desire to know say about your faith? And how might your inability to answer this question actually strengthen your trust in God? Think about how you spend, think about how you spend your time on a regular day. Are there things that you do that serve only to fill the silence and keep you busy? Try to replace some of those tasks with some quiet moments of prayer. Take a moment to read the prayer, Prophets of a Future Not Our Own, found below in the description of this video. How are you planting seeds today that others will reap tomorrow? If you enjoyed this reflection and want more, be sure to grab a copy of my book, Let Go, Seven Stumbling Blocks to Christian Discipleship. Use the hashtag ThisLentILetGo to share your journey, find support, and connect with others around the world committed to a deeper life in Christ.